What is going to be great about what I'm going to show you is that I have already taught you everything you need to know from chemical equilibrium theory and from what we've derived using the Rice expression for um, uh, uh, acid-base equations to be able to model that titration that we just talked about. And to prove it, I'm just going to draw some simple kinds of buckets here that will show you what's happening along the way. And every time I show you what's happening along the way, you'll have to admit that you already know how to do that calculation. Let's start off with a beaker over here that has some acid in it. Just for kicks, I'm going to make this a beaker filled with oh, an unknown amount of weak acid, four acetic acids. There they are. Remember, I don't know what they are, but I do know that that's a weak acid. Do I know how to calculate the pH of a weak acid? Well, I sure do. The pH of a weak acid is um, H plus is equal to Ka times Ca to the 1 half. So I could predict what this particular pH is right here using this particular structure here. If I know what acetic acid's um, Ka value is, and I can look up in a book, and I know that my unknown is 0.07 molar, then I multiply those two numbers together, take the square root, get H plus, take minus the log of it, and I have my first data point. And that data point is occurring when I've added zero milliliters of hydroxide. Now I'm going to add a little bit of hydroxide. Maybe I'm going to add one hydroxide here. This particular bucket, once I've added one hydroxide to it, looks like this. It's got three HAs and an A minus. And you might ask, how do I know that? Well, look, if I've got four HAs and I add one hydroxide, then I'm going to end up with three HAs and an A minus and a water. That's a nice neutralization reaction that's just occurred. So this is a bucket here with three HAs and an A minus. You might ask, what is the kind of equation I'd use to do this? But well, that's a buffer equation, because that's a buffer right there. It must be that I need to do a calculation in which H plus was equal to Ka times the amount of acid over the amount of base, my friendly buffer equation. So here I am on the titration curve, and I've gone from having a weak acid problem to a buffer problem. We know as we add base and we move toward the buffer that I'm starting to see an increase in the amount of the pH. Now I keep adding hydroxides here. Let's add one right here. There's the first one I add. Let me add my second hydroxide right there. What's my buck um, bucket look like now? It's still got HAs in it. It's got two A minuses. Turns out that the amount of HA and the amount of A minus are equal to each other. And it's also true that at this particular point, my pH isn't changing much. Why? Because that's the definition of a buffer. Buffers use this particular equation here. And the ratio of CA to CB is going to change modestly. And the H plus is going to stay about the same. Let's add a third hydroxide. Here we are right here. We're getting closer to the end point. We now only have one HA left and three A minuses, but it's still a buffer. So I've got a buffer here, I've got a buffer here, and I've got a buffer there. I am using the same equation at every location. But then finally, I get to a point where I've added exactly the same number of hydroxides as I had acids to start. My moles of acid, a weak acid in this case, is now equal to my moles of base. Well, what's taking place at that location? At this particular point right here, I have A minus, A minus, A minus, and A minus, four of them. Well, what is that container filled with? It doesn't have any acid anymore. It's not a buffer anymore. It's a weak base. So at this particular point right here, 
I have a weak base. Weak bases have the equation OH minus equals KB times CB to the 1 half. And I also know that those weak bases have pHs that are what? Well, they're greater than 7 because they're weak bases. So the pH has to shoot way up. And at this particular point right here, I have an equal amount of the weak acid to the strong base. If I had added an indicator, it would have gone from being yellow to blue or clear to pink or something like that. But it would have been an indication that I had transitioned from an acid solution through a buffer where the pH didn't change very much to an end point, an equivalence point in which I had only weak base present and for which my calculation Kb times Cb would be equal to the hydroxide. Notice how my pH is changing along here. It's a weak acid, so my pH is down somewhere in the 3, 4, 5 range. It's a buffer, so my pH is somewhere in the 4, 5, 6 range. It's now a weak base, so my pH is in the 8, 9, 10 range. And then I'm going to add one more drop of hydroxide. At this point, I still have A minuses but I have OH minus added instead, in addition. OH minus is a strong base. Weak bases and a strong base? Well, we know that these weak bases don't produce much hydroxide because they don't dissociate much. So all I have left in solution at this point is pure hydroxide as far as an approximation of the pH. And the pure hydroxide has, oh, a strong base result for its equation. So the pH continues to explode, and as it explodes, I have a beaker in which the OH minus is equal to the concentration of the base. Notice what I've got going on here. I have four different regions on this titration curve. Region 1 is the weak acid region. H plus is equal to KACA to the 1 half. Region 2 is the buffer region, where H plus is equal to Ka times Ca over Cb. Region 3, where the color change happens, where the titration has reached an endpoint, the equivalence point, where the moles of acid equals the moles of base. I now have weak base, so I switch equations, OH minus equals KbCb to the 1 half. And then finally, once I get past that, I can approximate that there's only strong base left in excess and that therefore my um, answer for the uh, pH is based upon OH minus equal to the concentration of the strong base that's left over after the neutralization. Isn't that kind of slick? As I told you, we are modeling the titration curve. And in modeling the titration curve, I am able to draw on chemical equilibria equations that I've derived strong acid or strong base equations, like this one up here, weak acid or weak base equations, like you see here, and the buffer equation. Once again, my promise is held firm. I told you when we started doing acid-base chemistry that when we did this work and we were through with it, we would find out that no matter how complicated our systems were that we were working with, after we'd done all that Rice equation work, we would, be we would have as a result the strong stuff, the weak stuff, and the buffer stuff. And we could apply it anywhere, strong, weak, and buffer, and we could solve for the pH. Well, here we are doing a titration of who cares what. And we've just modeled that weak, buffer, and strong solved all of our pH calculations.